Good morning, everyone. Mr. Minister of Development and Investments, Mr. Adonis Georgiadis, Ms. Kefalogiani, Member of the Greek Parliament, Mrs. Uh, Papa Kostantinou, um, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Greece. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, first of all, um, I'd like to say that I'm very happy that we are all back. We are back for this 22nd IDRA conference, international conference, that this year has broken all records in terms of participation. Literally, we ran out of rooms on the island, so we had a waiting list that unfortunately we couldn't uh, accommodate. So after two and a half years, uh, we're back in IDRA with this um, gathering, which, which as you know, has uh, what we think will be a very interesting technical part, but at the same time has an even more interesting social part. So some of us, including myself, uh, have slept uh, very few hours. I, ho I hope you had a good time last night in the, in the two events of, U of Aeon and EuroLife, and there's more to come today. But in the meantime, uh, in the intervening two and, two and a half years that we haven't uh, met, the world um, is really a different place. We have a pandemic that not only cost, unfortunately, over a million people in, 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 in human cost, and maybe even more, but also literally changed our lives and created a new normal in the way we live, in the way we work, in the way we interact with others. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the teams and the chat screens are now part of our life, and I don't think that two and a half years ago, uh, there were many of us who were working that way. Still, when we thought that the pandemic was over, or almost over, because I'm happy to say that you're all wearing masks, and that says that that means the pandemic's not over. In the meantime, we got a, a war, a very big and unfortunate war in Ukraine, which has had multi-level effects and still has an unknown outcome. We have shortages, we have congestion in ports, we have problems that we never thought of before. And at the same time, we continue to have the climate crisis. We insurers know the climate crisis by its effect on natural catastrophes and the effect on our market, but more importantly on society and the role we have to play there. And let me come to the economics of all this. So the European Union announced that during the first quarter of 2022, the 19 countries that use the euro, so this is the hard core of the European Union, had GDP growth of only 0.2%, 0.2, while the United States had negative growth of 0.4. And while this was happening, we have inflation in, in most major economies, developed countries, very developed countries, from the United States to Europe and our country as well, in the high single digits or even 10%. If anybody had told any, I, I don't know of any economist who, who a year ago would have been able to predict all these. Yet this is the, the truth that we live in. And in the blink of an eye, we got a word that I'm a bit older, so I remember the word stagflation. So stagflation all of a sudden became part of our vocabulary, and stagflation simply means we live with high inflation and low growth, which is really, really bad and really dangerous. So the bottom line is that uncertainty and disruption have become an integral part of our reality. And... Um, Regarding our industry, I'm happy to say that amongst all this uncertainty, both internationally but also in Greece, since we are in Greece and we represent the Greek market, the Greek insurance system, the Greek insurance industry is here, is standing, is fulfilling very high um, solvency 
standard, Solvency II, the Bank of Greece um, is supervising Solvency II. Don't forget, we went from a place where our industry had its problems and, and in some cases major and explosive problems in terms of uh, company failures. We, we implemented, we had to adopt um, Solvency II in 2016 in the midst of a very big uh, crisis in Greece. Our industry did it. Our industry um, uh, dealt with a haircut of bonds where the shareholders paid two and a half billion and no policyholder lost money. These are things that I keep repeating because it's important to, to, to note that the Greek insurance industry is there and then continues to be there and to be doing well, I'm happy to say, relatively well. Um, amongst um, what we are going through. So now we need to move on to the next phase, build resilience, build sustainability. Uh, we are a part of society, we are a part of the business world that deals with uncertainty. And as there is more uncertainty in the world, we have to answer those questions. So I'm not going to expand on technical things, but business interruption, which became very real for many companies during the pandemic, um, was a major issue globally, but in Greece it was a major issue because the business world didn't even know that they could get cover for that kind of risk. So we have a role to play in a crisis and we have to, a role to play in communicating what we do to the public and bridging the insurance gap. And in Greece, you know, we have a huge insurance gap in terms of being uninsured. At the same time, internally as an industry, as the world changes, everybody's talking about digital transformation. Our customers are getting younger and younger. They communicate in different ways. Uh, I joke sometimes that is it more important for an insurer to, to know what is COR, combined ratio, a very old KPI for insurance, or is it more important to know what is NFT, non-fungible token? If you don't know what is a non-fungible token is this day, in this day and age, it means you're not in contact with people out there. And that's dangerous for our industry. Our industry needs to remain relevant to what is happening in the world while maintaining capital and doing all the technical things that we do. So we have to do digital transformation and on the investment side, because we are very big investors, we have to deal with low interest rates, rising interest rates actually, and at the same time, rising prices, impact of climate change, solvency too, and my favorite subject, I cannot resist to say, IFRS 17. All the companies in Greece are spending millions, my company well over a million to adapt to a system which has definitely value, but I doubt that the value added is, is, is commensurate to, to the money and the energy that we're spending. And I'm afraid that uh, after IFRS 17, there's gonna be IFRS 27 and a never ending story. This is different from Solvency II, which I think made a big positive difference for the Greek insurance market in terms of reliability but there needs to be a limit to bureaucracy or to these new systems that change every few years and, and we spend time instead of creating insurance products and insuring people out there to adapting to new accounting standards every so often. A quick picture of Greek insurance industry, 52 insurance enterprises, Premium written 4.77 billion in 2021. Now, I remember that in 2009, the market peaked at five and a half billion. So we, it's 2022 and we're behind where we were 10 years ago. So that tells you something, split, split evenly between life and non-life. Investments, we are the biggest investor in the country just as insurers are the biggest investors globally, we manage 18 and a half billion, 10% of the country's GDP. If the pension system were more developed, this number, the 10% of GDP, would have been 50, 60%. If you look around Europe, where they have fully funded pension systems, 
the numbers of investment, the, the, the figures of investments of insurers is 50, 60, 80 percent of GDP in Holland, if I remember well. So there is potential there. The other perennially disappointing KPI, uh, insurance premium as percent of GDP is 2.6 percent in Greece, 7.4 percent uh, in the European Union. And, uh, but what does this mean practically? It means that there is the fire in uh, Mati, 800 houses were insured out of 4,000 4, houses that burned, 20%. 16% of the houses are insured. The government, yes, would love to insure everybody with zero insurance premium. I'm sorry, Mr. Minister, you cannot do it. And it's not only a lack of capital. I mean, you have the Bank of Greece who says to insure somebody, you need to have capital. The, gov <laughs> the government cannot do it. But also, allow me to say, there's a lack of know-how, okay? If there is a fire, we send a surveyor who is paid to figure out what is the loss and how much does it cost. The government doesn't have surveyors, and I, I speak from experience because we had a talk at, at some point. So we are here not to replace the government or the, the, the state, but to supplement the state in areas where they can, it's not your job to do it. And I know very well that you believe the same thing. So anyway, um, there's a lot of M&A activity in our industry and consolidation that I think was to be expected. I think it also reflects a very positive in, uh, climate, investment climate in Greece, despite everything else that's happening around the world that I think we have to give credit to this government has really made a big difference in attracting uh, investors and also investors like private equity investors and others to invest in the Greek insurance industry, which definitely shows potential. The only problem is that I'm back in Greece from the States since 1992, and there's always the same potential. We need to realize this potential, and to do this, we need a government, and I look at you, Mr. Minister, and the member of parliament. We need a, the, this is a government that understands, that is business friendly, that believes in insurance, more or less what I said, I think you're in agreement, but unfortunately has been very disappointing in implementation, very disappointing. So we would love to hear what you have to say uh, when, uh, when you have the floor. Um, I will say that there are areas that I don't want to focus too much in Greece. There is to, today there is a, um, a law pa to be passed regarding mandatory insurance for natural catastrophe in certain areas. We think it's very positive that for the first time the word mandatory insurance for houses is passed into law, will be passed into law. We think it's extremely disappointing Rather, it's a missed opportunity that these areas are so narrow that technically the thing is not feasible. We'd love to hear what you have to say on that, Mr. Minister. Um, there are many other issues, but the, the place is not here. My, my job here, um, after speaking for so long, is simply to welcome you and to say that we have ahead of us a short but I think very high quality session we have international experts to talk about the insurance industry um, after the minister's speech. And then I'll have the pleasure to, um, to interview. I'm not, a, I'm not a journalist, and I will never be a journalist. But anyway, I'll try to interview David Howden, CEO of the Howden Group, um, to get the, his perspective um, as a major broker on, on what's happening in the insurance market. Tomorrow, there is an, a very interesting panel on, uh, on, int on the international reinsurance market. Also, I want to make one note before I leave the floor, which is that we love IDRA. We're back in IDRA. I think you'll agree with me that uh, it's a beautiful venue. We decided to move the conference this year from September, meaning between Monte Carlo and Baden-Baden, to May. May gives us, 
moves us away from the congestion. Yes, we lose some uh, renewal talks, et cetera, et cetera, but I think this is an insurance and reinsurance com uh, conference. It is a meeting where people from Greece and many other countries meet to talk about the business, and we leave Monte Carlo and Baden-Baden to do all the, all the deals. And we, thank God, I think we get better weather. So anyway, we try it this time because we believe that we should keep trying things to improve things, and, and there will be a way for you to tell us whether you feel that this is a better um, timing choice or not. A big thanks to all the speakers and, of course, to our sponsors, Aon Reinsurance Solutions, Carpenter, Carpenter Turner, sorry, I, you know, I went to bed at 4 a.m., so. <laughs> and, of course, Eurolife FFH, as well as Howden Alas Insurance and Reinsurance Brokers SA for hosting this year's parties. Ethniki for the corporate gift and SRS group of companies for the safety kit uh, that you found in your room. And Inter-American, who's minding to keep us safe, providing constant ambulance ser service outside the door here. So with that, welcome. And Mr. Adonis Georgiadis, Minister of Development, please, the floor is yours. <laughs>